Being Canadian is awesome, except when it comes to writing off the interest that we pay on our mortgages every year. There is a legal hack that we can use in order to write off the interest on our mortgages, which allows us to pay down our loans faster and build our net worth quickly. In this video, I sit down with Robinson Smith and he walks us through the Smith Maneuver and how we can use it as real estate investors. Stick around until the end of the video where Robinson shares what kind of results his clients are seeing using the Smith Maneuver. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Walk us through the maneuver, how it worked and how it benefits Canadians from, like you say, being able to take this product that is not tax deductible and make it a tax deductible product. Okay. So we'll just dive into it. Uh, there's a lot to cover. If, if this is new for someone, they're not going to fully understand, but hopefully it'll give them the flavor that there is an opportunity to, to help them out. I'll go, I'll go through it relatively quickly. Basically, I, I like to start off by making it clear what everybody already knows. We Canadians do not have it easy. We've got high taxes, inadequate pensions. We've got high mortgage expense, braces and summer camp and tuition for the kids, inflation, on and on it goes. We don't have it easy here in Canada. And so therefore we have to take action, make a change. And it can be scary, but no one else is going to make that change for it. And one of the scariest things here is figuring out what your mortgage really costs you. You know, I know rates are lower these days, but a $400,000 mortgage for four and a half percent, 25 year AM, if you're 38% marginal tax rate, how much do you have to earn to pay that mortgage back? Well, first off, we know we have to pay back that 400,000. Secondly, we have to pay the interest that that accrues. Thirdly, we have to make these mortgage P&I payments with after-tax dollars. We pay tax before we can make this payment. So in this scenario, we've got to earn over $1 million to pay off that $400,000 mortgage. Terribly over, expensive. Over that 25 over years. Over that 25 years. Yeah. So, and we Canadians typically have two pretty pressing financial goals. We want this mortgage gone because it's so bloody expensive, but we also want to save for our retirement. Many of us don't have a choice of which we attack first, because if we don't contribute to our pension, nobody cares. But if we don't pay our mortgage, someone's going to come knocking on our door, right? For so sure. by constant trading on making our mortgage payments and not having a whole lot of jig left over at the end of the month, we're foregoing 25, 30, 40 years of compound growth potential because we're necessarily not investing as we're making our mortgage pay down. We have to take care of ourselves. How can we do that? Reduce our tax bill, eliminate costly expenses as fast as we can, such as the mortgage, and invest for our future as early on and as often as possible. Now, I won't talk too much about debt, but there's two types of debt, as you and your listeners will be very clear on. There's non-deductible debt, which destroys wealth, and tax-deductible debt, which creates wealth. In order to generate these tax deductions, which do great things for our tax bill, we must necessarily be buying assets which are going to increase in value over time. And again, your viewers will understand, if you put debt to work for you, you're going to have a better outcome than if you avoid debt in its entirety. So use your equity in your assets. And that includes your house. This isn't going to be for everybody. Some people are of the mindset, I was told all my life, I need to be mortgage free by the time you retire. And that's their goal. That's where they're going to go. But we know that if I've got $800,000 in equity sitting in my house doing nothing for me, it's earning no less than zero due to inflation. So put it to work. Your mortgage can be one of your biggest investment opportunities. So with the Smith Maneuver, what you're going to see is you're going to convert your 100% non-tax deductible mortgage into a 100% tax deductible investment loan. Each month, you're going to generate valuable and increasing tax deductions. You're going to be able to eliminate your mortgage in record time and each month you're able to invest money that otherwise you wouldn't have available. This is new money and there's no change required. You don't have to go out and earn more money. You don't have to earn cash flow from your investments. This is new money that's available to you strictly by restructuring you know, your personal finances. It all happens now simultaneously and needs no extra cash. You know, my parents are in their late seventies, uh, both of them still working and they were taught to pay off their mortgage free. And they did that in their, in their mid forties. But you know, the thing that they didn't plan for was loss of jobs and different things that happened to them through their life. Now, you know, by no means are, are they, are they suffering in a way that they're, they're struggling, but every month they're trying to, to get by and, and make, make ends meet in, in a way, you know? And uh, I think that this is a perfect example of somebody that could, could have used something like this years back and changed some strategies and might've ended up in a slightly different position. Like your parents and maybe yourself, a lot of people being grown up, they've grown up with people older and wiser than them saying, pay off your mortgage as fast as you can. And so it's this inertia. So I find that the older a person is, the more susceptible they are to being entrenched in this no mortgage mindset. Mm. The younger people, people like you and me, you know, a lot of younger people say, oh, okay, you're, you're asking me to maintain my debt balance, although convert it from bad debt to good debt, but you're asking me to maintain debt rather than pay it off? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. They've already resigned themselves to the fact that they're going to die with debt, right? But we've got a solution where we can turn that bad debt into good debt and do lots of good things for them. 
How does it work? You're going to continue to make your monthly mortgage payment as you would if you're not doing the Smith maneuver. Each month with appropriate financing, whatever is reduced on principal is able to be reborrowed back via the secured line of credit on a readvanceable mortgage. And so if you don't have one, that's what this requires, getting into a readvanceable mortgage and then you're set. But whatever goes down on that non-deductible mortgage balance is able to be reborrowed when that limit on the line of credit increases to get invested. So we're talking about home equity line of credit essentially assigned to our principal yeah. residents. Yeah. You know, we got to be careful that, you know, we're not just slapping a HELOC in second position beside an existing first, hmm. because then it's not going to readvance. And when we borrow that out each month, we get it invested. We do this each and every month. And because we're borrowing to invest, we get tax deductions and they're growing on a monthly basis, an annual basis. And when that tax refund arrives each year, you take that money, which otherwise you wouldn't have received, and you make a prepayment against that mortgage, reborrow, and then invest that amount as well. So on a monthly basis and once annually, base case scenario, you're getting invested each and every month and each and every year with that refund. So here's a typical mortgage. I get a down payment together, let's say 100 grand. I go borrow 400,000 from the bank, and I spend 25 years paying this off. This is what the readvanceable mortgage looks like. And a lot of your viewers will be, viewers will be uh, you know, they'll understand what this mortgage is. But it's that same loan portion, amortizing over 25 years or 30 years, whatever it is, but it's got that line of credit, which is attached to it. Hence this little umbrella here, because it's one mortgage with two facilities. So the use of the board funds on a monthly basis is critical here. We need to borrow to invest. So if we look at a mortgage payment of $2,200, but out of that 2,200, that 1470 goes to interest to the bank, but mm -hmm. 730 reduces the principal on that $400,000 mortgage. Therefore, this line of credit limit opens up by the same 730. I borrow that out and I invest. Month one, month two, month three, month four, on and on we go until the day arrives that I have zero non-deductible mortgage left. I've got a 100% tax deductible line of credit against my house. And because it's tax deductible, I've received those tax refunds. So this, they, and they increase year on year. It's a very significant reduction of our tax bill over the amortization period. And because I've got these refunds, I can prepay once a year. That means I'm out of that non-deductible debt fast making less non-deductible interest payments. And because I'm investing on a monthly and annual basis with those refunds, I'm taking advantage of compound growth now. So I mentioned that this requires no new cash from the homeowner. Once we restructure into that readvanceable mortgage, common misconception, and there's tons of misinformation out there. So do not look for information on the Smith Maneuver on the internet right? www.smithman.net. Send an email, whatever you want to do, get the information from the source. But when I don't do the Smith maneuver, I'm making that regular payment with my mortgage payment. In this case, 22, uh, 2214 a month. But when I am doing the Smith maneuver, I still have that mortgage payment, but I got an increasing balance on that line of credit and the interest has to be served there. So if no cash is required out of my pocket, where's that coming from? And the answer lies in the increasing efficiency of the mortgage payment. That very first 2214 payment I make, the very first one, a whole bunch goes to interest and some goes to principal, 728. So my very first month, I borrow that 728 out and I get it invested. The next month, that interest rate is being calculated against a lower balance. And so out of the same mortgage payment of 2214, a little bit less goes to interest, a little bit more goes to principal. Now I have 730 I can pull out. I still only invest 728, and the $2 that's left in my, my Smith Mover checking account is available to service the interest on the first month's borrowing of 728. And this keeps on occurring. So at this point in time, month four, I'm reborrowing 736. I'm still only investing 728. And the difference is available to service the interest on the first three months borrowing. And this continues. So what's it worth? We're seeing results, uh, several hundred thousand dollars, 300, 400, 500 thousand dollars, just the, the plain Jane Smith maneuver, which we uh, just went through there. Wow, did you get all that? If you didn't, you can watch the full interview that I did with Robinson in this video right here. And make sure you check back next Tuesday for the second part of this interview where Robinson goes through the mortgage accelerators and how you can use those. If you have questions for me, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. If you haven't already checked it out, my new and improved real estate investing masterclass is now live on my website at DarrenBoros.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.